Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again with another launch box for Android video. Today, we're proud to announce that version 1.5 has been released. And like all new releases, be it for the Windows version or LaunchBox for Android, we've got a lot of new changes, fixes, we've added some stuff here, and some awesome new features. If you want to get updated to the latest version, there's a couple ways to go about it. You can head over to the website and get it from there, or you can do it directly from within the app. We're going to go up to the top left hand corner, Options, and you want to make sure that Check for Updates on Startup is enabled. Once that's enabled, every time you start up LaunchBox for Android, it's going to check for new updates and you can automatically download them and install them right there. So starting this right off with some new features, alphanumeric navigation has been added for all game views. So let's say we head into our Game Boy section here, and there's a couple ways to use this. We can use select on our controller, or we can head up to the top right hand corner, jump to letter, let's find something in the C section. There you have it. So it makes it really easy to navigate all of your ROMs, especially if you have a big set uh, like Game Boy or NES. Tons of games in there, so having that alphanumeric navigation does come in really handy. But the best part about this is it works from a controller. So it really depends on the theme, but either you press select, it'll bring up the index menu like you see here, or you can use your left analog stick. Now I will mention that if you're using the Xbox One controller, you may need to update the firmware in order for select to work. I ran into an issue with an Xbox Elite controller that was on really old firmware. But it's been tested on a bunch of different controllers and it's working out really well. Plus, the index menu is themable. Here's a look at another theme. This is the grid, boxes grid. And finally, we've got unified light. Just another great addition to launch box for Android. With version 1.5, we can quickly mark games as completed, incomplete, or broken, or working. We'll head over here to my N64 section, and let's just do Cruisin' USA. If we tap it again, you can see we now have a section, Mark as Completed, Mark as Broken, and we can also favorite the game, which will give us a little star. And that's been there for a little while, but I just wanted to make sure everybody knew about it. Something I personally like using, and we can actually sort by favorited. With this new release of LaunchBox for Android, launching screens are now fully themable, so we will be seeing some new launching screens coming up from the community, but right now I want to show you what we got and what it entails. It's actually pretty easy to swap out. So if we head over to any platform and any theme view and access our view settings from the menu, we have a new option, Launching View. You can see I've got a few options here, Alicia, Box Art, and Unified Light. We're going to start out with Box Art. This is just what the stock one's going to look like. So we'll head back. We'll start up a game. Let's go with Sonic 2. And I've just froze this section here because it does go by pretty quickly. But during the loading section, when you're starting up a game using basically any emulator, what you're going to get is your launching screen. Just gives you a little bit of eye candy. This is the stock Box Art launching screen. We're going to head back into the menu and we'll swap it out to the Unified Light Startup. This is one of my favorites. And as you can see, we've got a new launching screen, and these are fully themable, so as soon as the developers start rolling on these Android themes, we're going to see some really awesome stuff here. But this is an awesome new feature to have with LaunchBox for Android. But i got to say, my favorite new addition here with 1.5 is support for MS-DOS and Game & Watch using RetroArch. So we'll start out here with MS-DOS. And I've got a few games installed. We'll just go with, let's do Sky Roads. We'll go ahead and play. Now I'm using RetroArch and the DOSBox Pure Core, but you can use the other cores if you'd like to. Personally, I just find it a lot easier to use Pure, especially on Android. And uh, this does work out really well. So now we can easily launch and play our MS-DOS games on our Android device with LaunchBox for Android and RetroArch. It's actually pretty awesome to have this up and running on Android through LaunchBox for Android, and I'm just using the on-screen controls right now, but it's fully compatible with a controller. And like I mentioned, we also have Game & Watch support using RetroArch. So it's actually really awesome to be playing these on your handheld device, given that these were real handhelds. 
We'll move over here to RetroArch and I'll just show you. The core you're going to be using is Handheld Electronics GW for Game & Watch. But it's super simple to get up and running. And I'll give you a little bit of gameplay here. Let's go with, we'll do baseball. Start this up. Might look a bit odd to some people, but as you can see, we've got the Game & Watch handheld on screen. Pressing start either on your controller or the RetroArch interface will bring up a menu telling you exactly what controls to use with the game, and each one of these will be a bit different. Select will change your view. It'll bring you right into the screen. Personally, I like playing them with a the handheld visible, and on some of these we do have time. This time is correct, at least right now in my time zone, which is pretty cool. And I've just connected my Xbox controller. And as you can see, when you press the button on a physical controller, the button moves on the handheld itself on screen. There's a decent library out there. They're very simple games, but it's really great to have this added to your LaunchBox collection. And with the additional compatibility of MS-DOS and Game & Watch with RetroArch, we've also added compatibility with 10 more emulators for Android 11 and above. In the past, they were working with older versions of Android, but Android 11 did a lot of changes and these emulators stopped working. But we've got 10 of them up and running right now. We've got 26EMU, ColeEM, ColeEM Plus, GBA.EMU, GBC.EMU, INES, Master Gear, MD.EMU, NES.EMU, and PCE.EMU. So if you're into using those standalone emulators, they're now fully compatible with LaunchBox for Android. But yeah, lots of great updates to 1.5. If you're interested in checking out the full change log, link for that will be in the description. There's actually a lot of great stuff with 1.5 for theme developers. So if you've been thinking about developing LaunchBox for Android themes, then definitely now's your chance. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. We really appreciate you watching. Keep an eye on the channel and the LaunchBox forums because we have a lot more coming. And like always, thanks for watching.